ASD versus uh, LFRD. Um, okay, so this question is um, essentially about how we uh, calculate the size and the robustness of the structural elements that, uh, that we're working on. Um, so, you know, what do we need to have the structure hold together? Um, and at the same time, uh, we're trying to provide a um, kind of a reasonable factor of safety. So it's not just that the structure is going to stand up, but that, you know, we're providing this extra, extra factor of safety so that, you know, if things are built a little off or if uh, over a span of time something rots out or rusts or something, like we have some uh, ability, a little bit of, uh, of extra in there in order to make sure that things stay safe over time. Plus, there's always the issue of how people actually use the building, the space, the structure. Uh, that, uh, you know, we build it in one way with one set of codes, but then, you know, things change and people have parties and warehouses or whatever, and there's dancing and the floor structure is getting a different load altogether. Um, so, uh, the, so the question is, well, okay, how do we calculate not only for using, knowing the capacity of the, of the material, say steel or concrete or something, um, but also how do we calculate this knowing uh, that we have to be, um, add this factor of safety and be sort of extra careful in order to make things be safe down the road. So uh, the ASD is the allowable stress design, um, is kind of the old school way of thinking about this. Uh, the LFRD, um, the load factor and resistance design, which I always mess up on, but I think I got right this time, load factor and resistance design, um, is kind of the more modern way of thinking about it. And the gist here is uh, that these are both just ways of assembling the calculations. Uh, there's, there's no real major difference in, in the outcomes. Um, it's just two different ways of getting to the same idea. So with ASD, with allowable stress design, so any of you went to, uh, had structures, you know, a few years back, you uh, probably all know the, the steel handbook. Um, and that steel handbook, uh, in the old green one is the old uh, ASD. Uh, they've now sort of switched it over uh, the 13th edition of the AISC, I think it's called, um, uh, is now, has sort of kind of complicated this question a little bit by changing ASD to sort of match a little more closely with LFRD. So the, the question actually gets really, really complicated when you start getting into all the specifics. But at base root, it's actually very simple. So here's the, here's the deal. Uh, the ASD, the sort of old school version of this, is we have a series of loads. We calculate what those loads are uh, that would be both dead loads and live loads. We add them up. Uh, and then we say, okay, we're going to do this out of steel or out of whatever, let's say steel. Uh, and um, we want to know how, how, what, how, how big a member we need, uh, how big a beam we need in order to be able to accommodate this load. But before we actually do that, we're going to add the factor of safety. And so um, there's a bunch of ways that you get to that, but typically what it really boils down to is that you're going to take that load, the dead load and the live load, and you're going to multiply it by 1.6. And that 0.6 is the factor of safety. So the ASD says, all right, I figure out all, I get down, figure out all the, you know, get all the numbers, calculate everything all the way out. And then once I've calculated all the way out, I then just multiply it by this big number at the end. And that takes it and makes it a much bigger number. Then we go in and we look at the, the capacity of the steel and we say, all right, this one, uh, you know, does this steel beam meet this, um, this larger um, stress? And so what we're essentially doing is we're, um, uh, we're taking the, there's the actual stress that the capacity of the steel, and then there's the allowable stress. And by having this factor of safety in there, that's how we've included that, we've made that difference to what, we're, what they're gonna allow us to use uh, using ASD. And we can then choose a beam that fits that, and there you go, it's all done. We can do that same thing with columns, and we can do with, uh, purlins and uh, floor structures and et cetera, et cetera. It works all the way through. It gets a little more complicated than that. That's why I said don't, this is just sort of the overall piece. But that's how the simple idea is. So you put all those things together and then we give it a factor of safety and then we look it up and we make sure that the beam that we're going to use can uh, not only 
fulfill the need, but fulfill the need with that factor of safety. LFRD is uh, saying, like they were sort of looking at it and they were saying, well, wait a minute. Um, uh, we're going to treat the dead load the same as the live load. You know, here's a situation where the dead load, we know really well what's going to happen with the dead load, right? I mean, it's, there's a set, you know, the, the steel isn't going to change weight. The concrete isn't going to be different, you know, 10 years from now as it is uh, right now. Like, we know what the load is on that. So, we don't really need to be so dramatic about, oh, we're just going to multiply that by 1.6. Um, but the live load, now the live load has some serious question mark to it. So that probably does make sense to have that big uh, factor of safety on it. So um, the, uh, if the dead load um, has a factor of safety of uh, 1.2, and then the live load has a factor of safety of the 1.6, uh, you can see that very quickly uh, that's going to be a different um, uh, allowable stress than the ASD was giving us, which was multiplying everything by that 1.6. So you might say, oh, okay, that means the ASD is always going to be more conservative than the LFRD. Well, no, because there's another couple of factors that go into the LFRD, which is they then start um, adding factors in uh, that have to do with the kinds of loads that you're uh, factoring in for. So just as a, an example, uh, if I have a very abrupt load, I would have, uh, have to add uh, more, um, uh, I'd have to add to uh, the, the total load more um, because I'd be worried about it just collapsing under a very abrupt loading. Um, so like uh, uh, a truck suddenly driving on something or uh, a puncture load from a machine or uh, you know, any sort of abrupt loading. Whereas ductile loading, things that sort of happen over a span of time and have the ability to sort of uh, um, sag before they fail and things like that, um, I can be less concerned about adding uh, more factors of safety on there. So I'm going to have a series of factors of safety that I'm just going to keep adding up and adding up and adding up. Um, so it's going to start lower than the ASD, but it may actually become more conservative depending on the specific of the situation. Um, in a fairly simple, standard, straightforward setting, uh, when your factor of safeties are uh, roughly in the kind of one to three ratio, uh, um, it's the LFRD is going to give you slightly um, uh, smaller members. You're going to have, you're going to be able to use less material. Um, in uh, other scenarios, you can actually come up with if for some reason I had a very very heavy uh, uh, dead load for whatever reason, uh, you can actually get a situation um, where the ASD actually is easier to to deal with, um, and and uh, less conservative. So. There's not a right and a wrong ASD and LFRD. Um, if you actually go through on most settings, uh, you'll have essentially the same structural choices. It just might be slightly different, um, and I might be able to save a little bit of material, uh, especially for steel, um, uh, and be able to reduce the size a bit, uh, and therefore save money and save energy and save you know, sustainability issues and all of that. Um, so if I don't need to, to do it the ASD way, the LFRD, the idea is that, well, we can find a, a one that's more nuanced and more specific to that particular load by combining all of these different loading factors. Um, and that's the gist of the difference. Uh, they are just ways of calculating the allowable stress and therefore being able to choose uh, a specific uh, uh, loaded member. So beams, say, for example, it's just a way to choose a beam. Uh, one is a little simpler, one is a little more complicated. Um, the little more complicated one has a little more nuance, is a little more specific. Um, as I said, the 13th edition of the uh, steel manual has actually kind of made this even more complicated because it's actually started to change the ASD so that it's more like the LFRD. I don't really understand why, why that's happening, but whatever. Um, so uh, the, the gist of it is, that's all you really need to know. Um, the, any of the questions now, I, I would imagine they still have some leftover questions that use ASD uh, that are still sort of floating in the system. But in general, any of the new questions will be based on the LFRD. Uh, and so the, the um, 
the calculations are those calculations. So in other words, you'll see the ones that have all these different factors all tied into it. Um, and the tables are the tables specifically uh, for, the, for the LFRD. Um, but it's essentially the same thing, just these two different ways of approaching it. Uh, like I said, we'll try to uh, find a good, uh, uh, little bit more descriptive with maybe some samples and, and uh, make a link to that. Today's ARE Live episode is an extension of our online ARE curriculum that you can find on blackspectacles.com, the home of online learning for architecture and design. If you need to prepare for the ARE, which I assume many of you guys do, and if you're looking for a good way to study for the exam that's more flexible and easier to digest than the traditional exam prep materials, then head over to blackspectacles.com to try out any of our free ARE video tutorials that are taught by tonight's presenter, Mike Newman, and that are built in collaboration with AIA Chicago. As an attendee, and as you can see here on the screen here, we have a couple of notes or information for today's episode. Anyone who is attending today's session, you're eligible to use this coupon code worth 15% off the first charge on your individual membership. If you're one of those folks who would like for your firm to purchase Black Spectacles access for you and your colleagues, just visit blackspectacles.com slash business, which is this fourth link here, and we'll send all the information for your firm to get set up. And also from now until the 15th of next month, firm memberships are 15% off if you mention this episode when you submit your form through blackspectacles.com. Business. Also on this, you'll see that our next webinar will be on May 27th with Mike at 6 o'clock. So if you'd like to register for it, here's the registration link. We're still firming up the details and the actual topic. So if you have any suggestions and would like Mike to cover a specific topic or would like us to interview someone in particular about a specific topic, please let us know.